And joining us now to talk about your health is Dr. Lisa Forbes. She is director of Adult Cong Congenital Heart Disease Program at the University of Maryland Medical Center. Also an associate professor of medicine at the University of Maryland School of Medicine. Doctor, thank you so much for joining us. When I, I looked at some research on this, I was really surprised to see that it's millions of people who are affected by congenital heart issues. What sort of conditions fit under that umbrella? Well, it turns out that almost one in 100 babies are born with a congenital heart defect, and that can be highly variable from something like a simple hole in the heart to something very complex where one of the major pumping chambers of the heart is missing. So this is a problem and we are doing better and better every day at treating these heart defects. So we have many children, over 90%, who now survive to adult life. So there's many implications for these patients. And you treat a lot of adults with these conditions. What, what does it typically mean for someone's ability to have a normal life? Well, that also is variable. Someone who had a simple hole in the heart that was closed when they were a baby or a small child really may have no long-term consequences, while others who have a highly complex defect where they're missing a heart uh, chamber, they may have a series of operations in the first year of life and more operations later in life, and they may be very limited. They may have special needs in school. They may not be able to do certain types of jobs and they may have a very limited life and even come to need a heart transplant as a child or a young adult. Is the um, medical therapy for this generally uh, directed to surgery because we're talking about a, a, a physical defect, something that needs to be fixed, as opposed to having uh, medical therapy, drug therapy that can help? Well, it's actually both. You are correct in that many of the structural defects can be repaired with either open heart surgery or nowadays with catheter techniques. That means using a procedure in the cath lab where you don't have to be open up. Um, we do use medications, for example, um, holes in the heart called a ventricular septal defect actually many uh, close within the first year of life. So a child may need some medications for a while and then the defect may not be significant and they can lead a pretty normal life. So again, it's highly variable depending on what the defect is. How often do you see somebody in your practice who didn't know about this thing until somewhere in adulthood? And um, Pregnancy might be a situation where it would be discovered. And, and in general, how are they eventually picked up? There are defects that we do see present in adult life. Someone may grow and develop normally, lead a very normal life, and you point out pregnancy. That is not uncommon that we might find a hole between the upper chambers of the heart uh, during pregnancy. And actually that patient may do very well throughout pregnancy, but then at some point, uh, afterward, we suggest that they get their defect repaired, which may mean open heart surgery or again, a catheterization technique. Uh, so we have a, a few patients uh, in the hospital at the moment who actually didn't know they were born with a heart defect. Their heart was quite large and uh, was attributed to something else going on in their lungs. And then we found out that they had abnormal veins um, draining to the right side of the heart. So, and then as my specialty, that is something that comes up, I would say a few times per month. But of course that's at a, a referral center like University of Maryland where we do pick up these kind of things and patients are referred in to us for that reason. Is, is this an issue that a, um, a sports physical would, would pick up? I'm thinking about, you know, 16, Absolutely. 17, 18 year olds. And, and how exactly is it, is it picked up short of doing an echocardiogram or something? Sometimes a murmur may be heard, you know, with a physical exam on the stethoscope, perhaps an electrocardiogram is done, and that is popular now for some sports facilities to be doing an electrocardiogram. We may pick up an abnormality at that time. We may also pick up abnormal coronary artery origins um, that do uh, impact someone, and then they get referred in and a further evaluation at that time. 
Um, and as I just sometimes listening, someone had a murmur that eventually was decided maybe that's not a benign murmur and they get an echocardiogram and we find something more serious than when it was ever thought in the past. What do we know about what causes um, these situations? I think I read once that the, the holes that you describe um, in an infant might be normal. I mean, are, are, is there a time in, in a, the development of a fetus where there's supposed to be a hole? Good. That's, that's a common thing, actually, uh, you do bring up because the baby actually gets oxygen from the mother. So there is not truly a hole. It's actually two flaps of tissue, two layers, and actually blood bypasses the lungs, and that's called the patent foramen ovale. So every baby will have that. And actually it only closes in about 75% of people. So there's 25 to 30% of people walking around with this flap valve of the PFO, but a true defect in the wall between the upper two chambers is actually, again, lack of tissue forming properly. Um, and there are some things that we can't diagnose uh, as a fetus like the PFO or there's a narrowing of a blood vessel that leaves the heart um, that could be missed because there's always a connection between the two major blood vessels that leave the heart. Um, but we can pick up many of the major defects very early in life. People don't really um, understand that the baby's heart or the fetus, I should say, the heart is developing in utero and by eight to 10 weeks, really there's four heart chambers and the valves are forming. Now there's ongoing development, but major defects can be picked up very early in fetal development. Before and we so go. It's incredibly important to have the prenatal care and the early diagnosis. Um, to answer your question about causes, we certainly know that alcohol, uh, poorly controlled diabetes, obesity, and some genetic factors, all are contributors to formation of congenital heart defects. Very good, Dr. Lisa Forbus of the University of Maryland Medical Center. Doctor, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for having me.